We're going to take a look today at Alexi's ultrasound machine and exactly what the circuit does and how it works. This is the schematic for the device right here. As you can see, it's a very simple design. There are a couple inconsistencies that I want to point out here so you can understand why this circuit is a little different than you would normally think. Here are the inconsistencies in the circuit right here. Let's start with the capacitor. 160 volts, 100 UF. What does that mean? It means it's a fairly decent sized capacitor compared to the voltage going in. On the schematic here it says 12 volts DC. However, that is incorrect. Let's go ahead and take a look at the power fact that Alexa used and I'll go ahead and tell you why. Okay, let's take a closer look at the power fact here. As you can see, I marked it in the red right here. We're looking at the values. Look right here where I marked it in blue. 32 volts, 940 milliamps. Again, on our schematic, it said 12 volts. Well, that's incorrect. What you need to see right here is the 940 milliamps. That didn't say 1 amp. It didn't say 2 amps. 940 milliamps. That means it's a very slow trickle charge. It's basically if you wanted to fill up a bucket and you decided to put it in your sink instead of outside or use a fire hose to fill it up, you can see right now that you're going to get a trickle charge. What is that going to do? In your circuit, you are going to have a pulse wave in your circuit because it'll take longer to fill up the capacitor than it normally should. Therefore, you're going to end up with an inconsistency in the circuit. Normal circuits run real smooth on DC. This one will not. It will be a pulse circuit. No matter if you get the full 32 volts or not, it will still end up being a pulse circuit because of the milliamps going into it and the high value of the capacitor. You may actually say, well, there's 32 volts going into it. The problem is, is the amps is the push. It allows the force of those volts to go through the circuit. Therefore, it's going to be a slow charge. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the circuits inside of this uh, ultrasound machine. This is the actual photos of the ultrasound machine. So everything here is 100% accurate. As you can see, all the parts here are used. They all came from something else, which is absolutely fine with me as long as it works. I'd, I'd like to save a little money myself. I just paid $100 for all these parts to build this, and I wanted to throw up. Anyway, this is what it is. Let's go on to the schematic because we have to look at another thing. Now let's take a look at the little mini transformer that's in here. At first glance on the schematic here, 11 turns, 11 turns, and then 50 turns. The blue wire is going to be your 50 turns, and then the magnet wire is going to be your 11 turns and 11 turns. Now, at first glance, if you look at the schematic, it's going to fool you a little bit. So let's look at the wires that came off of it, and let's see why. Here's why it might fool you. Here is the two 11 turns right here, but they're actually two wires a piece connected. So you have four wires right there, two in one unit, two in the second unit, and each one of the units gets 11 turns. As you can see here, the length is 20 inches on the two sets of wires. This is the blue wire here. Again, this is 50 turns, and it's going to be 97 inches of the length you'll need. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the wire size now. It looks to me at first sight like an AWG26 for the magnet wire. And then for the blue wire, it does not give a size on it. I'm going to tell you it's probably an AWG32. 
one of the reasons I say the wire size for what it is is this is the core of the transformer right here as you can see it's fairly small there is not a UF value given for this so you're gonna have to take your best guess at it just try to get the right size make sure the color is green when you buy it because it does change based on the color so just do your best on this one hopefully we all get it right if I get something in the future uh, with the right one I'll let you know here's a few more pictures of the actual device so again you have a potentiometer to control the voltage going in you also have an on and off switch on this this right here is the piezoelectric part of the whole thing now there is no transducer for those of you who bought the circuit with the transducer in it please understand it is not in here I personally thought it was in this device it is not the only thing in here is this piezoelectric disc now that we've taken a look at the device itself and exactly what's going on and how to build it let's go ahead and talk about the circuit for a minute what is the circuit telling you that it's doing basically it's a pulse circuit there's no other way to get around it your capacitor is high your voltage is low your milliamps on your push that means it basically trickle charges into your capacitor and then it shoves out the capacitor once it gets the value it, it puts a basically a pulse into your circuit so what do we know that this thing's doing it's pulsing the disc on the top of the gravity flyer so I always call this kind of circuit a dump circuit why because it fills up the capacitor slowly then it dumps the full capacitor at once then it continues to charge it again and then dump it again that's why I call it a dump circuit so anyway this circuit right here is simply just giving this little piezo disc a little jump in power every once in a while so again a pulse so why is he using this circuit this is a very simple understanding of this if you take the maximum value of the rest of the circuits in it and you pulse it it forces a pulse wave through the entire craft therefore that may be the jumping we see in the craft as it lifts there's no other part in this craft that is built like this this is a pulse circuit or a dump circuit this right here may be our lifting factor in our circuit I'm fully aware that until we build this whole thing we won't know what it actually is for a fact I have my guesses other people have theirs I leave it open that I might be wrong on some things but I do understand circuits and I do know how they work and this right here seems like the circuit that would give you that lift factor that little bump every once in a while because it's not consistent and it's the most inconsistent circuit in this entire craft there's one final point I want to make about this circuit when you hook it up to your oscilloscope you're gonna get a value you're gonna get a value when you turn it on basically at the point where it actually makes this circuit function you'll get a value and when it's at a max peak you'll get a value now you have a range and frequency of this circuit now what does that do for if you're using a different type of circuit for this you're going to have to know exactly which waveform to put into it at what frequency so again this is a very easy test to do build the circuit see what it is get a minimum and maximum circuit value and then we can see exactly where our range is in order to put it into the circuit properly so we can understand it properly if you did not build this circuit and you're using another device it's basically like guessing you're standing in the dark and hoping the lights are going to turn on and you know what it's going to be a very very long time for you suggest you build the circuit or if somebody else builds it and shares exactly what they've learned then we all benefit from that so now we can use whatever device we want to build the same values out of it anyway these are just my thoughts on this uh, if you build this circuit let me know I myself have ordered the parts it's a two-week wait from today 
So hopefully I'll be able to build it within that week as soon as I get all the parts in. Cross your fingers. Hope there's no shipping errors. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll see what the thing is. I got an oscilloscope here and I'll go ahead and put the values on it. And uh, build a circuit for everybody. And hopefully we all learn something good. If you learn it before I do, share it. And I'll go ahead and put it on the channel so we can all understand it. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Like, subscribe, do what you want. But thank you very much for watching.